Uh, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Real. I'm your host, Joe Mambu, and I'm here with Cheyenne. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? How you doing? Good? Oh, yeah, I'm chilling. All you right. know, <laughs> it's, it's NFL day. It is NFL <laughs> day. It is also Kobe's birthday. It is also Kobe's birthday. Right, right. Got some hooping in earlier just, to, you know, just because you have to. Yeah, that's the one sport I can't play, so you'll never see me. <laughs> I'm going to... Kobe by not touching a basketball. Damn. Yeah, oh, like oh, listen, I respect <laughs> it. I respect it. But yeah, we do have a lot of NFL topics to talk about today, right? So while the NBA is supplying a bubble, the NFL necessarily doesn't have it under wraps when it comes to their bubble. I know we talked a little bit of, about last week about a young gentleman, uh, uh, undrafted rookie from the Seahawks, uh, who brought a woman in. And mm-hmm. reading some of this bubble stuff for today's episode, or the bubble that isn't there, uh, was kind of weird to me. Uh, so this is episode 111 for all you guys. Uh, it's called the NFL issue because uh, the NFL has a big issue. Uh, yes. The same per issue. Use. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But how do you feel? Like, do you feel like the bubble that the the virtual bubble that the NFL is like trying to have? Do you think like that's going to work? Do you think it'll be a full season? No. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to be real with you because, first of all, um, maybe this is just me, but I feel like we hear more scandal from NBA than we do from, no, from NFL than yeah. we do from NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, honestly, it's kind of like I said in the last episode where we talked, I talked a little bit about Odell yeah. and how, like, Giants had to switch him out because it wasn't that he was a bad player. It was just that he was too messy. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of goes for a lot of players in the NFL. Yeah. So when it comes to a bubble, that means there's a lot more restriction. There are a lot more rules in place. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot that yeah. you have to take into consideration. And I feel like the, a lot of the players in the NFL, a lot of them are serious enough to yeah. handle it, of course. Yeah. Um, those are usually your best players. Yeah. But there are going to be a lot that are testing it. And the problem is everybody needs to be on board in order for a bubble to work. Because you could have the top guys doing everything that they need to do, yep. following all the rules. They're doing everything 100% focusing on the game. Yeah. And then you have the, like, the rookies or the less mature guys coming into the game and you know they're breaking rules they're having yeah. fun they're being young they're excited about being a pro player yeah and they go out break the rules catch the rona bring it back <laughs> to the best guys yeah. so now everybody's taken down because one or two guys didn't follow the rules yeah the bubble isn't really going to be effective with the nfl no. plus didn't they say it was like because they're more full contact than yeah. other sports yeah yeah so, so that's that's so that's an issue too, right? To be fair to the NFL, right? Like the NBA was already winding down its season. So Adam Silver, which he usually does a good job, is able to implement certain strategies to be like, hey, let's get this under the underway. The NBA benefited from a fifteen man roster, and and in football, it's what fifty three. I think mm-hmm. you know what I mean. And and there's more assistant coaches. Or coordinators in football than there is in basketball. You know, it's not really just like it's offense and defense. It's just there's so many you like know? subcategories yeah. within a team. Yeah, it's just way too many people. Yeah. So I think, I mean, I think what the NFL would have to do, right? It's 32 NFL teams. You would have to kind of break it down, right? Like where it's like multiple bubbles and where teams go there. And it would still be difficult because the amount of players on one team, and we're just mm-hmm. accounting for the players and coaches. You know what I mean? We're not talking about the team doctors. We're not. Uh, we're not talking about ch- where, ch- where the cheerleaders going to stay. Mm-hmm. Can't stay next to the football players. Well, you know, honestly, no damn to be up. socially responsible, cheerleaders aren't really a requirement. I get it. They <laughs> yeah, get your spirits yeah, yeah. up. We all love. <laughs> see them but they're not a requirement it's not like yo where are we gonna put the cheerleaders we, right, there's just right. they're right. not they don't need to be there yeah i'm sorry i know y'all got jobs too but yeah <laughs> it's just they don't need to yeah. be yeah yeah so they may uh, that may be one of the things is where you have to kind of have that essential personnel to be like yeah, yeah you, you can't really, really need be to be here. like yeah. in Integral? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah you need Inter- to be yeah Inter- integral yeah. yeah you need to be integral <laughs> to, the, to the team yeah. it needs to be like are literally, we can't play football with without you. So yeah. that that yes. those are the only people that should show up. 
It's, it, it's tough, man, because I don't I don't know what the NFL could do. Like, I know what they're doing with their sanitizing station, and they have this new position and within the team facilities called ICO, which is like dealing with the, the coronavirus, in which mm-hmm. they're going to do like testing. They're going to do testing like three times. I think it was like three times a day uh, for like two weeks, right? Because that's like supposed COVID to be- test? Yeah, yeah, COVID test. So like you get- like NFL players are getting tested every day. But does because, COVID even show up that immediately? Like That's the thing. Like as soon as it enters your system, yeah. you can test positive? <laughs> like <laughs> that's the thing. That's why it's called the novel coronavirus, because it's like, how do you really go about tracking it? You know what I mean? It, it makes it hard. And listen, I know the NBA is a shining example and the NFL is trying to, uh, you know, reach to that level, but it's really hard, right? Yeah. Uh it's on it's on to, like you said, the best players have to set the example. But even then, you got a couple of knuckleheads. Because it's not an actual bubble. Right. Like, they call it a virtual bubble. So, like, once you're done with the, you know, being in the facility, you can do whatever you want. Like, yo, some of the rules is like, yo, you can still go to a nightclub if it's 15 or less First people First of all, you shouldn't even be in a nightclub at all. Yeah. Like. You know what I mean? And then church services, you could go if it's like 25% capacity. Those rules aren't going to work because it it doesn't it doesn't really limit them. It doesn't really limit them in the fact that it's like nobody's watching me, but me. like nobody else is accountable. I am. I yeah. mean, it lowers the risk for sure. Yeah. But the problem is, it only takes one person with That's the it. virus to spread it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it can be fifteen people or less in a nightclub, yeah. but it takes one of those fifteen right. to ruin the NFL season. Literally. Yeah. yeah. One person doesn't know they have it because you can be asymptomatic. It's not just, yeah, I feel true. sick, I should stay home. Yeah. You can literally be running around perfectly fine and normal and yeah. still spreading the virus. That's why they put so much emphasis on wearing our mask. Yeah. Because everyone's like, well, I don't have it. I feel fine. And they don't yeah. follow procedures. And now you're the problem. Yeah. So it, it only takes one person. Yeah. And I, that's uh, the problem. NFL's not going to run perfect like that. It's not. So my thing is... Is that the guy we talked about last week? The knucklehead, yes. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> so, so he he snuck this woman in, uh, dressed as a player. I don't know how that. Obviously, it didn't work. But he tried to sneak this woman in, and he got caught. My thing is, if it's a virtual bubble, couldn't you just wait to do till you left, like the team facility, like? Yeah, because that's the thing. I thought it was nailed down like the NBA was. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, maybe he really got a little antsy. He couldn't take it anymore. But what I'm hearing is you can leave the bubble. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Like you would go home. You know what I mean? So Go to this nightclub, get your rocks off, go back home, whatever whatever floats your boat. Undrafted (laughs) rookie, guy's a knucklehead. But I, I just... I'm just like, yo, these these rules that the M, that the NFL is implementing, it's not gonna work. You're It'll not never gonna work. Have, yeah, you're not gonna have a season. Is baseball canceled? I don't think so. I think no? they're still trying to figure that they're out. They're still trying, yeah, because I know the, I know like because I think Marlins, they have the same they, issues. Yeah, because they, their teams are pretty big too, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it, it listen, it's interesting. We're definitely gonna keep up on that story because I want to see how that happens. Mm-hmm. I want I want to see what happens because I I don't think. I think it gets like up to like week two. I say we leave all players at home, get them all P fives, give them Madden, <laughs> and just duke it out. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I man. would I would watch them play Madden. But then you got those guys like y'all. I don't, I don't play video games. Well, then you shouldn't be a football player. Yeah, I feel you on that. How feel. you play NFL? You've never touched Madden. Like for, yeah. that should be a requirement. It should. Hands Listen, down. You know Lamar Jackson gonna be using himself this season. Didn't sound right, but you know, Lamar, he's the cover athlete for Madden 2021. I just need to know that you have proper hand eye coordination. If you can't play a video game, you can't play on my team. So, this is this is why I can't no, be a head coach. Right, though, I make grown right. men cry. It's just you're right. so beyond that, if there is going to be a season, there's certain things that we need to look at, right? Mm-hmm. One big thing is the uh, Dak Prescott situation in Dallas, right? He wants that Mahomes money, but he hasn't done anything near what Mahomes has done this offseason. Well, these past two seasons, right? Super Bowl MVP. It's true, but he's still a pretty deep. He's good, but... Like, he walked in and people like, Romo who? Like... Well, you know, Jerry Jones wanted to keep Romo. And it was he's the only Jason one. Garrett <laughs> who was like, nah, we got to keep this in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Dak Prescott 
It's a lot of love. For I it. mean, that's how it happens. Yeah. The star sits down for a minute. And yeah. Some up and rising kid comes in and Listen, takes a spot. Drew, Drew Bledsoe, man, and then Tom Brady came, and the rest is history. A little, yeah. little cheating here, and there, you know. You know. Some spy gate, you know, and all some that. Some deflated balls. Yeah, you know. You know but uh, this is all. <laughs> when it, when it counted, he was he was money. Him and Belichick. I'll, I'll never say it because you know I'm a Giants fan. Uh, I can't. Well, me. listen. I'm not giving any props yo, to Brady li- ever. <laughs> listen, I feel you, but the Giants had stopped him from getting too much Super Bowl rings. You know what I mean? So, so I'm saying. you know, the Giants come in when it's clutch. I mean, it hasn't been for come a few years. Come in when we're needed. We're that, we're that you know? hero you, you don't know you need. What is it? The hero we don't deserve? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a couple things that's going on, right? Like a couple storylines, right? So you got the Dak Prescott situation. Then you turn around the Cam Newton thing. That that to me is a big one as well, right? Like now it's, it's reported that Jared Stidham, who... <sighs> They were talking about running this dual quarterback system in New England. Now, I think if you have two quarterbacks that start in, you have none. Because that means they're not good enough to lead your team. Right. Uh, but with Jared Stidham being injured, Cam Newton is obviously the starter. His, his reps uh, has increased in practice. But before all that, did you kind of find it crazy that Cam being an MVP and like just his resume, three-time pro bowler, like, did you find it crazy that he had to actually out? He had to like fight Jared Stidham for a starting job. He had to prove himself. Yeah. Not too crazy, but that could just be my personal opinion. For yeah. me, like, you can be, you can be a top quarterback. Yeah. Um, you can be a top player. Yeah. And that can change. It's like, like yeah. for example, like we all know the Manning name. And That's true. The man, the Mannings literally run on the Manning name. The reason Eli Peyton played for so long was because he was a Manning. The reason hey. Eli, Eli has yeah. played so long is because he's a Manning. Yeah. Eli sucks. Like yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. we've literally watched yeah. him panic in the pocket for the past few years, and we still keep him as a starting <laughs> quarterback like he every wears year. His helmet backwards. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, where to go? Where to go? I literally, this man panics yeah. Yeah. on the field, yeah. and we're just like, you know, that's Manning. Like that's. Yeah, we let these guys ride off their name, ride off of what they did in the but beginning Cam of their career. Cam is young, though. I know Cam, Cam is, is young. Thirty-one years old. But like, if it was me, if I was working in the NFL, if mm-hmm. I had a say in this, I would always expect players to prove themselves. Okay. But like, I don't care what you did last year. I don't care what you did really? yesterday. I always talk about like, if I was a coach, this is why I shouldn't be a coach. Yeah. Because let's say my team made it to the playoffs, okay. right? And it's like, cool, we just won the wild card spot. We're going to the playoffs. Yeah. We got it. My whole team is popping champagne and they're lit. I'm walking in the locker room. I'm like, what y'all so excited for? <laughs> we got another game. What? No, so I feel we don't, that's not yeah. a Super Bowl ring. I feel you. I, I don't see championship yet. Yeah. I need y'all to yeah. buckle down no, and you. focus. I, I need you to keep proving yourself because yeah. anything can happen. That's true. And then Cam had those series of injuries. He had the shoulder injury, had the leg injury that kind of marred his last two seasons. But before he got injured, like when he came back, he was playing pretty good. Not his MVP level, but he was playing really good. Yeah, I'm sure. And a quarterback that's still kind of living off of his name is Baker Mayfield. Because, listen, when Odell went to... All, when they, when they got Odell jump. and the other guy, <laughs> the, the other wide receiver... Um, it was Odell and his friend from, I believe, LSU. I forgot the other receiver name. Mm-hmm. They were talking about the Browns was about to win a Super Bowl. I, I never gave them Super Bowl. Were they on the come up? Yeah. Yes. They were a much better team than they've been. Yeah. And I, even at my old job, uh, this dude was a Browns fan. Even he said, he was like, really? listen, he was like, I'm not banking on a Super Bowl championship this year, but I'm excited for where we're going. Okay. He's like, maybe in the next few years, they were they were building a proper team. Because, you yeah. know, over the years, we've seen the Browns make some really dumb picks. Yeah. Like, they, it just looked like they didn't want to do that. Yeah. But yeah. it looked like, okay, they're, they're making some right decisions. They're winning some games. Yeah. It was good moves for a better future. But uh, I'm not saying Super no, Bowl no, yet. No, they, they were talking about it, man, because they had the stud at running back and they had the two studs wide receivers and then you have Baker Mayfield who played really well his uh rookie season right but then the other seasons after that didn't really perform well yeah you know what I mean they fired I forgot the the, the coach name they fired but then they got uh I forgot his name but it, it, it's, it's just one of the things it's like it, it was just weird to me because it, as good as Odell is he's one person right mm-hmm. and I feel like in order for Odell to do what he does like Eli was bad. 
But at least Eli can get him the ball. Sometimes. Like, Baker, <laughs> ba- like... It's not even about Eli getting him the ball. Odell was good at getting to the ball. Yeah. I feel Because you. Eli was throwing everywhere, and the fact that Odell was, like, one of the few wide receivers actually catching it, yeah, that yeah, speaks yeah. more to Odell's skill than it yeah. does to Eli. Listen, I don't know. I mean, Eli sucked for a very <laughs> long time. We can but, all agree on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, I, I definitely agree on that. But I mean, but where do you feel like the do you feel like the Browns need to move off of Baker Mayfield? Do you think like, all right, if he has a good season, do you still keep that? Because I feel like Odell is gone. Like Odell is going to be gone. He listen, I wouldn't want to be in Cleveland, right? Like, let me play in Miami with whoever the fuck the quarterback is over no, there. Odell it's wants Miami. to be on a winning team. He, I don't that's know. really I don't... all he wants. Because <sighs> I mean... that was his problem with the Giants. Because Odell, he kind of made it clear that he felt like he was a star player playing on a losing team. And he was frustrated with what everyone else was doing. Yeah. But here he yeah. was partying, running up fines, stomping on logos, acting out, <laughs> doing everything you're not supposed to do. Word, word. <laughs> he's got a big ego. He has yeah. a big head. Yeah. So he's he's going to leave. I really don't see any loyalty there, especially to the Browns. I, I I feel like he had a little bit more loyalty to the Giants, but to the Browns, no. I think he'll just like this city. Right, because like you're a star you're a star player and like the best, well, maybe not the best place to play football, but one, one of the, one best, of the best cities to play football in, mm-hmm. right? Like, I'm a star wide receiver. You dreamt of this since you were a kid, and you're playing in New York City. You know what I mean? The Giants won two Super Bowl. Yeah, you wasn't a part of that. But I think he just was in love with the city. Cause I think he was expecting to come onto this team and to get a Super Bowl championship right out the gate and then when that didn't happen he was like maybe next year then that didn't happen and then he was like you know what i hate it here (laughs) and they just yeah just and they and they traded him because he was acting out and i can't even be mad about that do i miss odell yes oh yeah yeah. the one-handed catches he was doing the thing for us but he can't believe the only one doing the thing it's like i told you last week um or the week before um with the lakers the lakers depend too much on their big names and they're not building a well-rounded team that's a problem with a lot of these teams they focus on their big names they'd be like ah we got we got cam newton cam newton's gonna win it all for us he's not the only dude on the team Yo, he got to throw the ball. Because if you bank it all on Cam and then your kicker comes out and loses you the last point, like Damn, what? Cam, you should have kicked the ball. <laughs> yo, yo, Cam should have been the kicker too. Like it doesn't yeah. work like that. No, you I have to have a that. well-rounded team. You can't just bank it all on three positions. That yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, it, it, listen, it doesn't. And football is the epitome of a team game, right? But I just I, I listen, I, I think they need to move on from Baker. I think the Browns have to they I kind say of move on from Keep Baker. him yeah. in the background. Because he's he showed there's some skill there. There's, yeah, there's some flashes. They can build on. Yeah. But yeah. don't hang it all on him because you definitely you need can. somebody else yeah. to take that spot. But he can definitely be worked on. He's still young. It's still early. Yeah. He can he can work on his skills in the background, yeah. learn from the vets, yeah. do his thing, and then come back out later. He had a lucky season. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to call yeah, it luck because yeah, he, he didn't yeah. show and prove the next yeah, one. Yeah. But... I don't know, man. I don't know. Listen, I, I hope Baker May feels good, but it's right now it's looking like Johnny Manziel 2.0. Like, not as bad, but like, bro, you on no that if you have another bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I even think he got cut by like, where is he playing football at now? Like in some league in Canada, I believe? No one even knows. I don't know. They're like, where do you go? Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, so the next thing I want to talk about, the Houston Texans, man. Okay. Houston Texans got a lot of stuff, man. They traded, they traded DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, that was dumb. Yes. They, uh, they, 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 they don't know what they're gonna do with Deshaun Watson. Obviously, you signed him, right? Of course. Uh, Bill O'Brien and Big Sherm hates Bill O'Brien, uh, but Bill O'Brien has done a horrible job uh, with the Houston. Which Texans. is why Sherm hates Bill O'Brien. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean. Uh, but a guy that we haven't talked about a lot on this show is JJ Watts. J.J. Watts, great player, you know what I mean, defensive end, but he's injury prone for like extended periods of time, right? So if the Texans are going to sign Deshaun Watson, right, Mm -hmm. like do you cut um, J.J. Watts? Like do you let him go? 
Because he's not as productive as he once was. He missed a lot of games. I mean, how old is J.J. Watt now? Do we know? Let's see. How old is J.J.? J.J. Watt's age. Let's see. Oh, he's 30. He's still, uh, I mean, 31, that's old in NFL years. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's been... He's about 80. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like great, great player. He does a lot for the city of Houston. But I just feel like, yo, it's time to move on from him, right? Like, you kind of have to revamp that Texas squad. Because the, te- the Texans could easily go for a Super Bowl. Like, they could push. They could. I yeah. just don't want to see the Texans make the same mistake that most teams make, where it's, oh, this player's done so much for us. They've built this name. They've built this career, this reputation. Yeah. We need to keep him on the field. It's like I always say, Peyton Manning had bolts in his neck. This man couldn't feel his fingertips, and he was expected to throw a ball. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's our quarterback, and he can't feel his fingertips. Yeah. Where does the ball the ball roll <laughs> off? He's Joe, like, I'm where does the ball roll he's off? Like, Yo, I'm a Your winger. fingertips. Like, you need to feel it. You need to know where it's going. He literally won Super Bowl 50 off running game. Yeah. Because this man was just full of injuries. But they kept him because he was a Manning. So I don't want to see the Texans yeah, make the same no, mistake of like, oh, you know what? He's J.J. Watts. You don't win a game with he's J.J. Watts. You no, win yeah. a game with skill. You win yeah. a game with putting your team together. And the best ability is availability. Like, if you're not there, we can't go off of what you've done for us. Like you said, if you was a coach, you cut. And I, I have get, no patience. I have I, no patience. And I get it, but <laughs> it, it, it's one of them things. Is like, I like J.J. Watts. I like what he does for the city of Houston. He's a tremendous player. When he's, a, when he's available, he's the man. But the, the problem is he's not available. And if you're going to pay that salary, I think it's like $17.2 million for next year. Yeah. That's... That's, a little, that's a little ridiculous, especially when you have to think about your future on the offensive side of the ball with Deshaun Watson. You already let DeAndre Hopkins go. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson was unhappy about that. And somebody will throw some money at Deshaun Watson. He's a really good player. Right. You know what I mean? He's not the Lamar Jackson or the Pat Mahomes, but he's on that second tier. My thing is, if you're not currently a Super Bowl team, if you're not currently a winning team, yeah. then you need to prepare for the future. Like I said, like the Browns were building towards a future. They were not a current Super Bowl team. They no wasn't. one expected them to win last season, but they were doing better. You need to build so that you yeah. can become a Super Bowl franchise. Like Patriots were a Super Bowl franchise. They could afford <laughs> they to... They never looked back. They could afford to yeah. fumble a little bit yeah. because they had a team. They had a coach that knew how to coach that team. Yeah. They had... A, a plan that they yeah. understood it made sense. I, I think what it comes down to is like the culture, right? Like obviously like the Patriots and the Spurs, like they're like outliers of like culture in their respective sports. Texans ain't that. And I know Bill O'Brien is from that, you know, Belichick tree, but it's it's one of them things. I'm just like, homie, like you you, you got to do the right thing. And I was really disappointed with that DeAndre Hopkins. He's one of the best wide receivers the NFL. You giving away for a bag of peanuts? Like You know, I always want to ask, like, I want to go behind the scenes and ask these guys like what they know that we don't, because they make some real stupid decisions they, they <laughs> when it comes have, to picking yeah. players. Yeah. Like I see some of these teams let the best ones go and draft yeah. the worst ones. And yeah. I'm like, who told you to do that? What do you know that no. I don't know that made you make that move? Listen, and on on that note, we talk about Mitchell Trubisky, because I feel like the Trubisky. the Bears, they have Given him too many chances, right? Yeah. Like, he was number one overall pick. I forgot what year, because he's that bad. <laughs> but, but um, it, it, listen, the he's he's like Rex Grossman, right? Like sometimes Grossman was really good, you know, and he was that Bears offense was looking good. But the, it's it's always about the Bears defense, like, and Mitchell Trubisky. It isn't the be- the worst quarterback the Bears have ever had, but he's not helping them, right? They they're relying too much on the defense, uh, and I think they need to move on from him. I think they can even get a guy in their division because what's his name is unhappy, mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers, right? Because you you know the Packers uh, drafted, I believe, uh, what Jordan Love. Uh, they drafted a qu- the quarterback, in, I believe, in the first round. The Packers did, and listen, Aaron is unhappy about that because he kn- because you know. When you draft a guy that high, it's over. Like the writing is on the wall. Your yeah, time is up. You're replacing. Yeah. Yeah. And Aaron didn't have a bad season last year, but to Aaron's standards, it's like, oh, you're falling off a little bit. You know what I mean? Where Green Bay defense was a lot better last season. Aaron Rodgers is still a top five quarterback to me, but. I mean, if I was a coach, it's not even about being the top five quarterback. Yeah. My plan wouldn't be to immediately, like, 
erase Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Like, my thing would be, cool, like, you're still doing great. You're still playing great for us. Yeah. That's great. We want you to keep doing that. Yeah. But you're not going to play forever. So we need to get another quarterback in here yeah. with a with a dope skill set yeah. who can train under you yeah. so that when your time is up, he can slide into that spot. See, but that's the thing, though. I think Aaron Rodgers got a little bit of that Brett Favre in him because Brett Favre said it. Like, when Aaron Rodgers was, when he got drafted, Brett Favre was like, yo, I'm not helping him. Like, Brett Favre was like, fuck him. He's on his own. Yeah, I get it can be intimidating because yeah. it's like, you by you drafting this man, you're saying that I'm going to leave soon. You're calling yeah. me old. If I'm on yeah. any job, like, I was on a job where I was the manager. If they brought somebody in that was like, yo, I want to be a manager one day, and all the manager spots are filled, <laughs> and they're looking at me like, teach me, and I need this job. To take your job. <laughs> like, excuse yeah. me? Like... <laughs> I'm like, teach you what? Yeah. <laughs> how to take my job? This is how like, you file not... your purchase orders. It's like, they're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, look, listen, I feel you, but that's the thing is like, in the NFL, it's like, the thing I don't like about the NFL, the money ain't guaranteed, right? Yeah. A lot of it isn't guaranteed. Even Pat Mahomes, $400 million contract. Like, it looks great on paper, but it's not guaranteed. Like, you right. know, in baseball, everything, basketball, Guarantee the money is astronomical, but in football because there are a lot of injuries and I understand where they put these clauses in, mm -hmm. right? These performance clauses and whatnot, and injury clauses, is that that money's not guaranteed. So Aaron Rodgers is, you know, as a, especially at the quarterback position, I always feel like you looking over your shoulder. Aaron Rodgers has been a football player for a very long time, has played at a very high level, but his writing is on the wall. So you kind of look at it like. I know he he's probably looking at it like, hmm, you know what I mean? Like, what's next? So it'll be a great opportunity for the Bears to put a package for Rodgers, right? Because the Bears defense is always solid. But if you got a guy like Aaron Rodgers who could take you over the hump, who knows the division, who can win you that division every year, well, let's say next five, three to five years, Bears better pull the trigger on that. Right. And let Mitchell Trubisky, because Mitchell's no threat to Rodgers, you know what I mean? I feel like when you're a football player, you need to go into this game knowing that this is not a lifelong career. No. This isn't like, I'm a doctor and I retired when I was 75. Yeah, like, it doesn't work not like that. It's, it's football. Yeah. Literally, Tom Brady is one of the longest <laughs> players yeah, I've ever seen yeah, go. And I crazy. thought he would never quit. I'm like, somebody's going to have to sit him down because this isn't how the game goes. Yeah. When you become a football player, I think you should just know that this is a career that will end. And afterwards, yeah, I, yeah. I'll go on TV, yeah. I'll become I'll become an analyst, I'll do something else. It could be Tony Romo. Everybody right. loves Tony but, Romo on CBS, right? Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't a game you play until the retirement age of 60-something. No, like, this not is at something all. you retire early. And you have to have a heart and know that you need to pass that on to yeah. a younger player. Yeah, Somebody yeah. else is going to step into your spot. And listen, this was your team yeah. for a long for time. A long Don't you time. want your team to keep winning even after you've yeah. left? My thing is this, right? I look at it like you you ate and your family ate for 15 plus years, right? Can this man let his family eat? You know what I'm saying? But that, that's the thing. It's like, all right, Rogers. You still the man, but yo, put Jordan on, cause you ain't always gonna be the man. Right. Yeah, you know I mean. One more thing, some Knicks basketball is not a lot to talk about, cause Knicks basketball is always. It was terrible. a trap. I knew it. <laughs> it's too good to be true. Knicks got the number eight pick. Yes. I don't know the players in the draft who are projected at number eight uh, for the Knicks, but the Knicks are always horrible. They have made. Horrible choices as a franchise. I know Leon Rose and Tom Thibodeau, the Tom Thibodeau hire has been, will probably be a good thing for the Knicks. Looks like they want to do things a little bit different. But I don't really expect the Knicks to do anything with the eight, the number eight pick. Um, they just don't, I don't make expect anything. I don't. I have Dennis Smith Jr. sitting there and he's not doing anything. But on a future episode, we'll talk more about the draft as we, you know, you know, as the draft is closer, we'll talk about maybe they can pull the wool over on. It looks good. Don't think they will, but you know. Yeah, you know I mean, you Listen, keep Mitchell I, Robinson at all costs. Keep Mitchell Robinson. Listen, I'm a Giants fan, so I understand the Knicks pain. Like you just you gotta stay got loyal. Two I mean, Knicks really got two. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta say, as a like New York fan, you gotta know loyalty. <laughs>
Listen, if you're looking to date somebody, date a New York fan because they're the most loyal people you will ever find. Like, yeah. They will never yeah. leave you no matter what is going on. Damn it. We you know, know loyalty. Damn it. That means I'm a, I'm a Laker and Green Bay fan. So. Yeah. You going to break somebody's heart? Shit, probably. Damn. All right. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you guys for tuning into another episode. Cheyenne, it's dope having you here. You know what I mean? Talking everything football and a little bit of basketball. Uh, if you got any questions and comments, make sure to hit us up on lbrstalk at gmail.com. Check the Facebook page, LBR Sports Blog, where Big Sherman does a good job of providing dope content in between episodes. YouTube, uh, Instagram, and uh, there's some other stuff, but Big Sherm always does that part. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on that note, you ha- guys have a good Sunday. Happy birthday, Kobe Bryant! And tomorrow's Mamba Day, which is the start of Mamba Week. And uh, that's another episode in the bag. Peace. Later. Later.